So hi everyone, very good evening and welcome to this another video about your data analysis into the series. We are looking about your data analysis onto a Titanic data set, like how can you do that in a very different way, which would be different for us from other people's also because there is a very tradition being followed out that you can import the libraries, then import the data set, do this, do that and that's all over, right? But sometimes we need to do some different things also so that it gets a little catchy also and you get a new ways as well, a little different way from other people to check out, go other things and go through those things, right? So into the previous video, I'll just quickly give you a recap of what we have done. We just simply, I introduce you to the Google Collab IDE, which we are using throughout this particular series to get out our data analysis done successfully. Second is we are just simply importing other libraries. I have just done that particular thing over here, maybe my NumPy, Pandas, and PyLab. That are the three libraries which we will be using throughout this particular um, analysis. It's, it's, I'll say that it's on a very short level where I will be using these three further about the machine learning training models, machine learning when we are going to train the models, test out the models, train those models. So into that particular thing, we will be using out our maybe a lot of sky sky loan libraries, right? Sky file libraries, a lot, a lot of things we'll be using up further. Right, let's start with this particular video. So into this, I will be first of all helping you out with the loading of the data set because that's a very important thing that we need to check out that what or how is our data set exactly, right? Great, so I am going to use my data set as, um, okay, give it away df underscore t. Okay, because I have told in the previous video to you that we are having three different data sets for this particular uh, analysis only. So that will be through your test data, your trained data, and even you're having some one passenger data as well, right? So this is the trained data, first of all, which we are going to use up over here to go ahead with, right? So deep underscore t, that is a variable into which I am going to store out our main data set, right? So df underscore t, that is equal to I'm going to read, write p dot, p dot read underscore csv. Give me a minute. Great. Okay. Read underscore csv that is one of the functions which helps you out to read up the csv files. What about the pd? pd stands for your pandas library. If you have checked out my previous video, I have explained you very beautifully that why we are renaming the libraries and everything I have explained you very beautifully, right? So if you haven't watched, you can go, first of all go ahead and watch the previous video, then come to this particular video again. So df underscore t, I'm just set that as pd dot read underscore csv. That's one of my ways to read out my csv file. And generally we work with the csv files only over our data. And so csv stands for your comma separated values. Okay, if you haven't, are not clear with that, just make sure you write that down. CSP stands for your comma separated values, fine? Great enough. Now I am going to just uh, like read out these CSV files. What I'm going to do, I am just going to write train.csv and that is my CSV file which I have already uploaded up over here. Just check this out, train.csv, right? So df underscore tp dot read csv train.csv. I am going to hit out shift, okay. See, one more thing, uh, whenever you want to run out any like anything over uh, any cell into the Google Colab, what do you do? You have two methods. First is either you click the circle, okay? It will run successfully. Second one is either you do enter plus shift, okay? Enter plus shift, it will shift plus enter, maybe shift plus enter. It will help you to run that out cell again successfully. Depends on to you, whatever you wish out, you can do, okay? Fine, pretty cool. So pd.read csv train.csv, fine. Now next what I'm going to do, I'm just going to check out maybe the top five rows. So I'm going to put out a comment and I'm going to check the top five rows and columns of my data set. Okay, data set. Great, so for that, what function do we use? We use of the function that is a head function. Okay, I'm just going to write df underscore t dot. I'm going to write the head. Okay, whenever okay, whenever we are using any function over here, we will be using the brackets after the function, right? I hope you know about that particular thing already. So head is one of the functions which helps me to display at the top five rows of my columns, of my data set actually, rows and columns. Great. So this is all our data set which is being visible. We are having the passenger ID. Okay, then we are having up here how many people survived. Okay, we are having a P class as one of the maybe columns. We are having a column that is the name, name of the passengers, or 
their gender of the passengers what was the age of the passengers right we are having up like do we have do they have any siblings and is like something like that right we are having one column as par as well we are having one column for the tickets one column for the fare that what was the total fare costed to the particular person we are having or uh, in what kb number that particular person was there right and even we are having one impact okay these are all different columns which we have out all over our data set okay great now you can download this particular data set from kaggle i did have taken this particular data set from kaggle only kaggle.com you can go there and just check out titanic data set or even i'll just put down the link in the description you can just go ahead and check that all over so generally that is what is to be done fine just i have checked out the top five rows of my column now i have checked out the top five rows of my data set what if i wish to check out the maybe the last five rows right we can just check that as well so i'm going to write df dot okay first of all i'm going to put up a comment and that comment is check the bottom five rows of my data set okay that's what i am going to picking out the bottom five rows of my data set fine now for that what do we use we just use up a function df underscore t dot my function name is tail okay okay so head it helps you display the top five rows Okay, tail. It helps you display up the bottom five rows of your data set. I ran that out, and see uh, now here I am having up my uh, generally the downside of five uh, of your uh, rows. Okay, passenger IDs, how many people survived, the P class, the name, the gender, age, right, tickets, fare, KB, and bag. Every all of those details we're having, which we which we were having up for your uh, head function also. Just it was used for checking the top five. Tail is used for checking the bottom five rows of your data set. Right, that's just only the difference which is over there. Great. Now let's say I want to check out the shape of my data. Shape means total how many rows or how many columns do I have in my data set? Let's check that out. So just simply write df underscore t your variable into which your data is stored, and just simply write down this function which is a shape function. The shape function helps you to tell you the total number of rows and columns into your data set. You are having 891 rows and 12 columns into your complete data set. That is what you are having up over here. Right? 891 rows, 12 columns. Again, I am repeating out. Fine. So I just checked out that okay. I do not have a very large data set also, and it's not very, very, very small. Also, it's like quite okay data set into which we can work and like check out and go ahead. Fine. Now, this is what was inside this particular the libraries and the data set part. Now, what I will be starting, I will be starting with the generally going through and analyzing, or maybe you can see the checking out uh, some information about my data set. Information about my data set, maybe we can say what are the data types of the columns, right? Total how many empty columns or empty rows I am having. Maybe we can check out a lot, a lot more things over there. Right, so we will just start with those particular things. I'll put up a heading with the text, bold, and like this. And into this, I will be going through checking out all about what do we have up here. I'll just make it to double hash, a little small heading. Um, okay, I will just write viewing the info about my data set. Okay, that's let's say what we are trying to do viewing uh, viewing out my information about my data set, right? So first information I want to check that what are the data types of my columns which I'm having, right? I want to check what type of the data are being stored up into my columns which I have up over here, right? So df underscore t dot. Now this d I have this d type as my function. I'll just get it one line down. I'm just going to put the comment. Um, maybe help to check the data types of my data set. Okay. I just want to do this and hit out enter. Great. So now here we are having up the information. We are having this passenger ID as 
my column managers having the this and storing up the integers survive that particular column is also my integer column that b class it is also an integer column the name column which we are having that is standing for object and that object means that it is having the strings okay it is having the strings gender again it is having the strings age that is um, okay age is actually float now age can't be float right you can't be 73.5 you can't write that right that's not it did generate the dalent looks good so after which slowly gradually we will try to change that and remove that decimal places and we will just try to change and put that um, from float maybe from decimal to the integers we can do it manually uh, with a quick code we will see that afterwards right step sp that is again having my integers part my integer ticket is my object yeah it should be object because it contains the numericals and the alphabeticals both fair is float yeah absolutely that works because so uh, the fair for your ticket can be integer also it can be 700 also it can be 700.5 also right or 50 70 700.50 or something like that could be that's pretty clear cabin is object and bag is object fine so i would require to change only one column that is the age one because i don't think so age could should be in the float or it could be maybe something with that right so it, it can't be like float or something so i what i'll do i'll just change out this so um, age wala column uh, maybe afterwards not right now fine so this is what my d types function is helping me to do up over here right now next i'm going to check out the information okay i'm just going to write df underscore t dot i'm just going to write info as my function so my train data set which we are having i'm just checking up the info about that particular data set and i'm just going to do shift plus into fine now columns we are having here as passenger id we are having the survive fleet class name gender age sib sp pass ticket fair given and marked everything we are having and about the non null so we are even having some null columns also as you can see here the for the top five we are having 891 that was my total number of rows but for the age you are having 714 then for keeping you are having 204 right and for embarked as well you are having two less 889 so this shows that yes you are having up the empty call empty rows into your data set we can check it it one more way that total how many we are having but before that it is as well helping me with the data types that total how many data types i am having right uh, total 2 are my float means my decimals 5 are my integers and 5 are my objects that is total what we are having now fine going forward over here going towards next step what i'm going to do now i would just simply try to check out uh, maybe the information about df underscore team dot i'm just going to check out with the is null function is null function is one of the functions which helps me to check about the null values which i have of my data set okay it helps me to check about the null values fine df underscore t dot is null now i just i just don't want the is null to be done now i'll tell you the reason for that i'll just run this out and see now it showed me true false true false true false will i be able to gather any info from this particular thing no no nothing nothing as it like because there are 890 rows or uh, sorry 891 rows if you start from one so i am like simply not able to get out any information from this particular chart which is being shown to me and in data science or in data analysis you say data analysis if you are not able to gather any information from any function which you have used or any graph which you have made so that's just of no use it's completely at all no use for you to use that function or to generally make that particular graph right so i'm just going to do one thing i'm just going to put the uh, df underscore t dot is null i'm just going to use the sum functions and now i will run this out now let's see it's not giving me the total how many null values i have in the respective columns okay okay one second let me first of all put down the comment that what was this function doing it was uh, helping us to um check on information with my data set and uh, maybe non null values right that was what it was uh, 
this particular thing was doing. And now if I try to work with this and go with this particular one and check what it is helping us to do. So I'm just going to write that helping us to helping us to find the uh, total total number of null values in each column. Right? So what it is helping us to do, it is helping us to find the total number of the null values in each and every single column. Now, this makes out the sense to me because with this particular thing, I would be able to check out total how many null values I am having in any respective column. Right now, this makes a good info and good sense also to me to go through and check this all about. Right. So now, as we as I told you if here or as well that these so five top five columns are not having any null values. So see here, top five are just showing me zero. Now, it is having 177 null values, means 177 rows for this particular single column is empty. Now, see, this doesn't mean that if there are 177 empty uh, spaces in my age column, so it will be for complete row. No, not for complete row. For only one column, that is your age column, there are 177 rows into which that age column, that portion of the age column is empty. Right? I hope you're able to like get in what I am exactly helping you to understand, right? I, I'm just like maybe you're getting what I'm trying to tell you. Again, same we have for the cabin, and then again we have the same for the embarked. So that is what total info I have now got. Now this makes a sense to me because I got a quite good number. That, okay, this first number is present over there as an embed. Fine. So that is about this is not dot sum. Great. So into this one, we have checked out a few of the maybe functions, a few of the functions which helps us to gather a good info about our uh, data set, about like checking all about our data set and what is it all about, like the things, right? Now further into the further next video, which we'll be going through into that next video, we will be checking a little bit more all about our data. Now we'll be trying to gather some statistical informations about that data, maybe the minimum, maximum values, with the mean, median, standard deviations, the percentiles, everything will be going to get the information into the next video. Right, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead, everyone. Please subscribe to the channel. Do share this video with your friends and do give it a like also. I'll see you in the next video.